You're tuned in to Ultra Radio. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to the most ultra of nations out there. How are you guys doing? Even on? Well, you better be. Because, ah, oh man, I forgot to tell you in the first episode, it is actually against Ultra Radio rules to be having a bad day. So, if you're caught feeling a little down, caught with a frown on your face, well, we'll have no choice but to sit you down and play some of your favorite songs until the grind has been completely taken out of your cyber grind. Look, look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look, I don't make the rules. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. Well, what do we have on the docket for you today? Well, first off, it is our new segment where I will be telling you all of the goings on in this beautiful little hellscape that you and I share. After that, it is our debate segment where the main topic for today is oppression of demon and machine hybrids with head of Parasol Industries, Albert Hayden, and, man, I can't believe I'm about to say this, the former king of lust, Minos. Well, in his soul anyway, but they'll be arguing the toss later on. And then finally, it'll be time for the Listener's Corner. I know, your favorite. Where your letters and comments will be read out by yeah boy. Now first off, some news. Now as you all may recall, it was Queen Cleopatra's coronation not very long ago. To be specific, February 14th. I know, I said this before, couldn't have chosen a better date myself. Now anyway. The new Queen of Lust was greeted with open arms, and in some cases legs, by all of the Lust Layer's denizens. She had a few things to say in her first ever layer-wide addressing. It was mostly professional stuff like promising a bountiful rule, dropping inspirational quotes, pretty sure there was a keep calm and carry on in there, but you know, boring stuff overall. <sighs> However, there was one little part that I think everyone loved. Take a listen. Creatures of Lust. My gratitude to all of you for being so welcoming and kind to me for my first day on the job. You're all the sexiest bastards I've ever had the honor of ruling over. I would like to end this statement with an opportunity to give one of you a role beyond your wildest dreams. I am opening up a voluntary role of royal footstool. A bad bitch needs a place to rest their feet. And I know a lot of you degenerate mother out there would love nothing more than to serve their queen. The best part about it? The role rotates daily. Everyone gets a chance to be my furniture. That sound good? Anyway, enough talk. I'll see you bitches later for the party. Well, I think they made a very good choice appointing her to be queen. She almost got me signing up for that job. Gotta love that lust layer dialect too. Such potty mouths. Anyway, one more thing for all of you, there is a hotel up in the limbo layer that should be very proud of themselves, because they broke the hell record of most curse words said in just 60 seconds. The insane little creatures did it! They managed to fit over 2,000 curse words in just one minute. They listed off all of the curse words in English, Spanish, Japanese, and Welsh. And you know what? They even had a little bit of time at the end to say 20 words in Kikongo. Chicago! That's crazy! I didn't even know that many existed! The investor of the hotel was very, very happy indeed with the results. Take a listen to his response. Wow! I couldn't believe my very ears! It was a non-stop cavalcade of naughtiness! It was a constant flow of profanity! It was a never-ending stampede of slurs and curses! I've never felt so much pride for these idiots in my entire life! That was the hotel's investor, Alistair the Radio Demon. Wait, Radio Demon? What's he doing putting money into a hotel? Either times are tough for the poor son of a gun, or I'm missing out on something in real estate. Also, little fun fact about the hotel, did you know the manager of that hotel is a record holder for longest distance ran in one minute? She could have gone for longer, but the guy she was chasing had to give up sooner or later. <clears throat> that was all for your news, Phil, and just in time, too. Because it is time for our little arguing segment where we get two schmucks to argue about things for our entertainment. Perfect for all of you drama fans out there. So for today's topic, we're going to be talking about the oppression of demon-machine hybrids. I know, heavy stuff. A lot of people tend to think that mixing organic and inorganic life together is a very bad idea. Maybe people are being boomers about it because it's a new thing, or 
It could be the fear that they could take over. Ooh. Which is still a very boomer-esque reason. Anyway, giving the point against the hybrids is, I've mentioned him before, and may I say it once again, such an honor to have him, former King of Lust player, Minos. Minos! Oh my gosh, this, this, this is an absolute honor to have you on the show. How, how are you doing? Spare me thy kindness, amalgamation of steel. All right, still pretty sour after the little run-in with the V-model, I see. Enough! Pretty continue. I wish to leave here as quickly as I possibly can. Well, you didn't have to be here. Shut up. Oh, charming. <laughs> Giving the point for the hybrids is the CEO of the parasol company down in the fraud layer, the philanthropist, and a hybrid himself. <sighs> Please welcome Mr. Albert Hayden. Mr. Hayden, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I understand you must be a busy man, bringing the next step in demonic and mechanical evolution and whatnot. It's no problem at all. Thank you very much for having me. I'll never say no to standing up for the rights of my own kind. Whoa, very, very brave of you. Right, so, Minos, allow me to start off with you here. Why are you so against hybrids? I mean, from personal experience, they taste exactly the same as their demonic and mechanic counterparts. What? Oh, did, did thou say the taste? I said what I said. So, why the hate? Well, um... Uh, it, it, it doth be an insult to the very design of man itself. It's unnatural. We, as a race, were not meant to have electricity replace the very blood in our veins. Hmm. It completely strips us of the very essence of humanity. Okay. Forgive me for finding it ironic that the argument about design is coming from the guy without a face and translucent skin. Anyway, thank you, Minos. Al, did you... I'm sorry, may I call you Al? It's just less of a mouthful. I don't know, die. Can you? Point made. Uh, Mr. Hayden, do you have anything to respond with? Just for the listeners at home, I'm going to add courtroom music to add dramatic effect, and also, I just find it funny. Now, Minos, while I do agree that to a certain extent that it's not entirely natural looking, surely you could agree that the biogenetics are very helpful for prolonging life. Mm. With Parasol's work, the weak don't have to be left behind or die. They have a fighting chance. Take my last case, for instance. A frost demon came in. Her strength and mental capacity fell far below the regular threshold of its kind. After using our machines and diagnosing the issue, we found that it was because they had a low frost level in their system. While that doth be a cruel hand that fate has dealt them, we are not supposed to intervene. Well, if fate is dealing hands like this, then maybe someone needs to intervene. That Frost would have surely died either from starvation due to incompetent hunting or losing a fight against its fellow Frost. But I digress. After diagnosis, we implemented a biomechanical component that would pump water fresh from Lake Cassitis, the coldest fluid in existence, through all of its system. It even accelerates the rate at which the water is pumped through. It went from being the runt of the pack to the apex of its kind within days. You know not of the forces thou meddle with! Apart from that, what of the mating rituals? If the creature looks impure, then the chances of making offspring are surely halved. That right there is where the design team comes in. We knew this when we took the job, and now we offer cosmetic makeovers. Different colors, ergonomic design choices. I mean, in some cases, demons prefer to mate with hybrids. If I may further build on that, there are demons out there who are unable to breed. But with our help, and a little bit of lust lay touch, they're able to continue their legacies. Wow. Mr. Hayden, that is incredible! Now, I'm not one to exaggerate, but I personally believe you might be the vanguard of a new era. Like, your work with Parasol has earned the complete, total gratification of all of the demons out there who've been disadvantaged, either at birth or hindered later on in life. That's Parasol's goal. <laughs> now, Minos, I feel like Mr. Hayden here has laid his case out pretty plainly. His work is responsible for saving the lives of countless demons. He's given them a second chance at life. You're really gonna turn your nose up at that? Isn't that what you fought for? Oh, forget the crimes that the creatures of steel hath committed. The crimes? Oh, dear counsel above, we're going down that route, aren't we? Oh, no, just like I do. The machines are responsible for most, if not all, of the major hell attacks. And thou art contempt with merging the natural body with these amalgamations of scrap! Okay, Minos, look, I'm just gonna be frank here. 
I would have totally understood your side if you were to bring up the valid arguments such as, like, well, I don't know, the fact that Parasol was responsible for the viral outbreak in the heresy lair 70 years ago? Wait, what? Or the very valid feeling of unease and discomfort at the possibility that Parasol may be connected to the recent surge of missing homeless demons? What are you talking about? Why did you hear that? And not to mention the methods of testing their prototypes. Like, you guys know there's an entire sector in the fraud lair that is blocked off. Like, seriously, one foot into their territory? Security is on you like a fly on a rotting filth corpse. And the worst thing is, no one knows about it! Objection! I won't have this nonsense! Shut up and sit down, Hayden! I will not sit here while you slander my company like that! Oh, but Al, it's always slander if I'm lying. And I'm not lying, am I? Now do me a favor, sit down. You son of a... Oh! Oh, God damn, what is this exoskeleton made of? Anyway, look, now, Minos, those are very valid arguments, yet you only go for the selfish ones. Like how impure they are, or how the machines are all criminals, which is very discriminatory now. Look, I'm a hybrid myself. Not one of parasols, granted, but, you know, I'm a hybrid nonetheless. Oh, my freaking head. Please, Mr. Hayden, I'm speaking. Now, I have a suspicion that these arguments are stemming from personal events. I understand that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a first-generation V-model and lost? That's bound to put you in a rut. You think that that situation is swaying your opinion here? Mm -hmm. Leading you to be biased against them all? Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm leaving. Oh, okay. Well, that was the debating segment. Thanks so much to Albert Hayden and former King Minos for coming on and discussing hybrid oppression. I can't feel my left foot. Where do you stand on it? Let me know. Alrighty then, now it's time for everyone's favorite segment. The Listener's Corner! Yippee! Right here is the segment where you can write in and ask, yours truly, any silly little wacky little questions that you want. Right. Let's kick things off with a letter from DestructoGabe8. They say, Hey, DJ Diabolica. Hello. First of all, love the show. By far the best radio station out there. Oh, isn't that sweet? And second, you seem like one hell of a fighter after taking on Alt Ratham. So let me ask, what's your favorite fight of your life? Thanks for the kind words, Gabe. Hope you're having a good one. Now for my favorite fight. Oh, man, that is a good question. I think it might have to be that one fight I had with that really cool-looking witch. Like, they were lightning fast, and they could summon these huge-ass demons that I've never even seen before! Like, there was this one firebending spider, right? And this super, super tall, beautiful butterfly woman. Which, by the way, would. It wasn't life or death or anything, though. It was a stupid reason. Oh, man, come on, Diabolica, what was it? Ah, I remember now. We were fighting to see who would pay for her entire shopping spree. And let me tell you, she has incredibly expensive taste. I wonder how she's doing. Man, I should've got her number. Anyway, moving on. Next one comes from G-Quack, and they say, a rubber ducky drifting endlessly on the seas of wrath with Ultra Radio and DJ Diabolica as its only source of entertainment, Ponders. Have you ever met a human? And what is your opinion on them? The living kind, not the souls that turn to the husks in hell. If you've ever met one, what was your experience with one like? Aw, cute little rubber ducky in the ocean. Aw. Now to answer your question, because mankind is dead. Like, very dead. It's actually, quite the contrary, quite easy to meet a human. You just gotta know where to look. Do you know how many people were around in the final war? Like, more than 10 billion. Actually, right now, Purgatory's experiencing a next-level amount of overpopulation. Demons can't go up there, but like I said in the last segment, I'm a hybrid. And one of those perks is that I'm not affected by the no-demon rule. There's a huge variety of humans up there. You got the regular inconsolable sons of guns who are very much struggling to cope with the fact that they're dead. And then you got the super chill ones who've accepted their fate. Those ones, let me tell you, they have some stories. Like, okay, get this. There's this one guy who got killed, but then came back as some kind of, like, fungus thing. The thing is, he didn't know he was a fungus thing until he died again. The guy died three times. How insane is that? Anyway, hope that answers your question, G-Quack. Have a good day. 
Next question, DJ Diabolica. What are your thoughts on the recent incident with Benjamin the Earth Mover? Oh my god, he has a name? Best wishes, Wayful Fries. I hope I'm saying that name right. Okay, look, hot take. I saw this coming. Like, come on, look, we've all seen this before. There's this huge Goliath thing of a weapon that is seemingly impenetrable and indestructible, the next step in warfare, but then here comes a teeny tiny little guy who scurries in between the cracks and just destroys it from the inside out. I mean, it's a tale as old as time, people! Anyway, sorry I got hated there. Hope you're having a good day, Wayful. Now a letter from a Void Dweller. Yo, DJ, just curious, have you ever seen any other mythological legends in hell? There's this Irish guy, really smart, really f Oh, we can't use that word on air. And I'm curious as to how he is. Although you probably won't find him, as he is only ahead and not even in hell. I wish you the best of luck. Stay safe, Diabolica. An Irish guy? I think you might be mistaken. There's a Scottish guy who spends a lot of his time on the hip of this big dude. White skin, red marks, I don't know. Look, I've not seen him in this region of hell, but I was on the way to Hellcon in Helheim, and I bumped into him there. Super chill. Thanks for writing in, though, buddy. Wait. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a comedic genius. Super chill. Helheim. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right, got a letter here from BioLibrary. They say, Dear Diabolica, your tunes have been a great refresher for when I'm cyber grinding, but I can't help but wonder, how far out does Ultra Radio reach? What areas do you cover in your stories? From a humble swords machine fan, Machete Haver. Aw, thank you very much for that letter, Machete Haver. Well, to answer your question, before the station took off, the signal only ever stretched across all nine layers. However, recently, We've managed to transition over to digital radio. All you need there is a good connection to the Hellnet, and you can tune in from wherever. Like that one Minotaur from Tartarus. Yeah, I still remember you, you little son of a gun, you. <laughs> However, let me just say, Ultra Nation doesn't stop at Ultra Radio. No, no, no. For those of you that tuned in last time, you may remember that we launched a brand new radio station called 104.6 The Gap. They're going to be the guys that cover all of the things interstellar and astronomical. <laughs> so, if you fancy listening to some stories from beyond the stars, tune in. Alright, one last letter from one of you, and that letter belongs to... Drumroll, please... Luigi! <laughs> Dear Diabolica, I've been hearing a lot of a certain place in the Pride Ring. Pride Ring? Oh, must be a secret one. A hotel that intends to rehabilitate sinners for them to be redeemed and go to heaven. I think it was the Has-Been Hotel or something. Have you heard of them? And do you think they can actually redeem sinners? From your boy Luigi. Wait. Oh my gosh! Wait, this is the hotel that broke the hell record for the most curse words in a minute, right? Oh, well, ain't that something. Glad to put a name to a face. Well, I have never personally been, so I can't talk from personal experience, but if they can provide services and redeem people as good as their knowledge for vulgar vocabulary, then holy shoot, they've got to be good. I had no idea the investor was a radio demon either. What's he doing investing in businesses and real estate? There's got to be something I'm missing. Maybe I should get into it. And that concludes our Listener's Corner, but I leave you all with a little question of my own. Imagine you're in a room with an enraged, hideous mass. Your only weapon? The thing that's on your left. You win in that fight? Let me know. All right, that is all for... Wait, wait a second. You're a cyber grind. It has far too much grind in it. We went over this at the beginning, people. Right, I'll turn a blind eye this time. However, how about I get my boys four years strong on that? <laughs> Stay bloodthirsty, gearheads. Diabolica out. Well, if you're red from the start, then we're in this together.